very good morning and welcome. It's Corporate Governance Platform brought to you by the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Iksan. I am Fumi Omoburiu. Iksan is a leading recognized professional body in Nigeria that's dedicated to enhancing the status and practice of corporate governance and public administration. Today on the program, we want to look at importance of transparency and disclosure in corporate governance. Uh, importance of transparency and disclosure in corporate governance. And our guest uh, this morning is Mr. Isaac Abayomi Usuntui, ACIS partner at Usuntui and Tokon Law, OTL Law. Good morning, uh, Mr. Usuntui. Good morning for me. Nice job. Nice oh. to be here. All right. Thank you for joining us on the program. Also here, I have Mr. Kaudi Ketefe, FCIS, Head of Research, Ixan. Good morning, Mr. Ketefe. Good morning for me. Good morning, our guest, Mr. Haisi Kabayomi Osuntui, ACIS. Thank you for honoring our invitation and all our listeners. Good morning. All right. We're going to take this message and we'll be right back to stay with us. The world is constantly evolving into a knowledge-based economy where skills and competencies constitute the lifeblood of public and corporate governance. You therefore need to empower yourself to fit into this new world by gaining basic knowledge and improving your skill set in the governance-focused disciplines. That is why every aspiring as well as practicing professional in governance field needs Ixan. Ixan? What is Ixan? Ixan is a leading statutorily established professional body dedicated to enhancing the status and practice of corporate governance and public administration. Ixan members are trained as chartered secretaries and administrators. Who are chartered secretaries and administrators? Chartered secretaries are high-ranking governance professionals with a broad base of skills, unique amongst other professions. They are trained in law, finance, accounting, administration, strategy development and corporate governance. In today's world, chartered secretaries and administrators discharge a wide range of duties and responsibilities, including functioning as chairman of companies, executive directors, non-executive directors, company secretaries, risk managers, compliance managers, board evaluators, and corporate governance evaluators. That is interesting. How then do I become a chartered secretary and administrator? Good. Go to the institute's website, www.ixan.org. You can also visit the National Secretariat of Ixan at Plot 6, Elephant Cement Way, Alausa Ikeja, Lagos, to get full information on how to become members. Ixan, the hub of governance professionals. All right, uh, Ixan, hub of governance professionals. As said earlier, we're looking at importance of transparency and disclosure in corporate governance. All right, uh, Mr. Osuntui, let's begin this way when we talk about transparency and disclosure. What exactly are we talking about? Um, thank you for me. Um, in corporate governance and parlance, it means just being honest and open, but um, everyone knows that transparency is um, the ability to see through without difficulty. And why disclosure is to reveal or tell on something. And uh, when we bring it to the Corporate governor plans again would say um, any information that you to be disclosing to stakeholders has to be timely, accurate, and consistent. Okay, uh, looking at its relevance, you because you've brought it to corporate governance. Now let let's uh, talk deeply about uh, the relevance of uh, transparency and disclosure uh, in the context of corporate governance. Okay, um, as a company, or well, yeah, in the corporate plans, if you're transparent. Um, it gives, it makes you accountable, okay, to people you you work for. That's the stakeholders. Okay. And uh, also, the more accountable you are, uh, it it reduces when you're accountable to some set of people. It reduces any chance of uh, misadministration, and uh, mismanagement, and also it um, it enables trust. Your stakeholders trust you. They uh, they entrust their funds, their investments. And you, so it gives them this kind of rest of, um, it gives them this assurance that these guys are transparent with us and uh, we go with them to any length. All right. Now, I want you to give instances of situations desiring disclosure and transparent dealings in governance. Okay, for existing stakeholders, what they'll be looking forward to in their company where they've invested their money 
like everybody would say, they all invest for profit for, for profit purposes. Mm-hmm. They will be expecting to see the financial records of the company timely, as I went due. And uh, for new, for new, or for pro, um, for proposing um, customers of a company, they'll be looking forward to seeing the object of the company. What does this company do? In clear terms, if because some people people have different beliefs when it comes to investing. Some people think they can't put their money into um, oil and gas for some certain reasons. Some people can't put their money into agriculture for some certain reasons. So you have to understand what the company is all about first before you actually put your money into it. And when I'm talking about um, financial status of the company, we're looking at the profitability of the company, very key. We're looking at the debt load of the company, how indebted are these companies. Okay. And you're looking at the, um, the short and long-term obligations of the company in terms of financial goals and also plans. And sometimes also, people take a closer look at the corporate social responsibility because some just don't want to invest because of, fine, we know it's about money, but some also want to see what this company is all about. Is it just about the money or they engage in some other activities that might just interest them? Okay. All right, let's look at, um, you know, the difference uh, between financial and non-financial disclosures. Okay, just like I said earlier, um, financial disclosures are disclosures about money, could the ego, <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. They want to know about the figures. Mm. Why some, the non-financial information are information gives stakeholders to understand the value creation capabilities of a company. They want to know what are your environmental um, performance, what, what is it like, okay. what is your social performance like, and what's your governance performance like. So those are the non-financial um, informations that ought to be disclosed or that should be disclosed to stakeholders. What are the harms in not fulfilling the disclosure requirements and ideals? Okay, while I was thinking about this question, I did the, the funny rundown. Okay. That the company runs a risk, big risk of um, financial mismanagement, which trickles down to poor decision making, which affects the financial position of the company, which leads to unemployment and also raises the level of poverty. So the, the, that's why it's key to, you know, um, key or stick to guidelines set to enable your company to run smoothly, to disclose, to be transparent, to have a transparent dealing with your stakeholders. Because any inform, anything that, you know, when companies don't, when they don't disclose, they, they keep information to themselves. They feel these people don't need to know what we're really doing. Let's give them what they need to know. And um, okay, well, I think we still, I would say, explain further on that. Okay. But the most importantly, the risk of not complying or not, uh, what's it called, not disclosing when they ought to, they cannot even run foul of the law. Because there are laws looking after companies who don't really stick to the regulations set out. Mm. So these are, the, these are the arms that are waiting any company who doesn't stick to um, the guidelines. All right. Now, um, on transparency, uh, there's a provision of the code that's communicating and interacting with stakeholders, uh, keep them conversant with the activities of the company and assist them in making informed decisions. You know, let's look at the extent to which you agree with this statement. Okay. I believe that to be um, principle 27 of the um, NCCG 2018, that's the Nigerian Code of um, Corporate Governance. It's as simple as this. If you communicate with me as a stakeholder in your company, I understand what you're doing. I understand that, okay, fine, this is where I need to, if the company needs my input, though, I can contribute. But what most companies don't understand is that informing me or communicating with me regarding the status of the company in which I'm invested into is um, another way of seeking free advice or consultation from, because most people just don't put their money into a company and go to sleep. Mm. Some are professionals. Some are really good in some aspects of like growing the company. So if I put my money in your company, I expect, uh, you call me for a meeting, say, okay, fine. These are the goals, these are the plans we have for the company, maybe a five-year plan, a two-year plan, a short-term plan, or a long-term plan. I, as a professional, I'm on this way. I can say, okay, fine. It makes a lot of sense, but can we do it this way? Can we do it this way? Instead of you, instead of the company directors or the management of the company going out to seek for professional helps, you can easily get these things from within the company. And also the most important thing is that the entire core, the, the core, the core um, preaching or the core gospel mm. about corporate governance is transparency. Okay. So you communicate with me, I believe what you're doing, 
And even though when you run into troubles in future, I'm able to stand by you to say, okay, fine, I'm fully aware of what is happening. And that's why you see companies sometimes when they run into issues in future, when they run into issues in the future, you see their stakeholders coming out, maybe their shareholders coming out, saying a lot of nasty things about them. And if they were previously aware of what the company's plans are, they will be able to stand by their company to defend, to tell them, no, fine, we know, we know about this, we know to resort to this, and we're willing to stand about this company until this trying phase is over. Now, let's look at this uh, disclosure. The code provides that the board should ensure that the company's annual report includes a corporate governance report that provides clear information on the company's governance structures, policies and practices, as well as environmental and social risks and opportunities. What's the significance of this requirement? The significance is transparency. It's, we talk about transparency as... Um, it's so simple in words, but it's extremely difficult to do. It's extremely difficult to add by. Some um, companies believe that not all information has to be disclosed. Some might be too sensitive for the stakeholders hearing. Some might not be good enough for the stakeholders hearing. But you owe them this duty to disclose. How they take it is out of your hands. But communicating with them, letting them know, disclosing information, key, imp key information, you know, decision-making information to them enables them to trust you, to trust the process. And um, if we have this, if this principle 28 of NCCG is strictly adhered to mm -hmm. in Nigeria, there will be zero, I won't say zero, I don't want to say zero because we know, uh, we know the state of the country, the corruption, <laughs> the corruption level in the country, but it will reduce the, the ability of directors, management, uh, management staff of a company to run the company, and when me, I mean mismanagement of finances, of assets of the company. So when you tell me what you want to do and how you intend to do it, I know that you're not cutting corners, I know that there's no insider trading, I know that there's no body making secret profits. You then come, you're letting me know who, are your, who you're contracting your jobs to, you're letting me know who the recipients of the contract is, you're letting me know how much you're paying. This simple disclosure gives an idea of, okay, fine, this person is getting the job and I'm paying some amount of money, then we are good to go. But in the, in, the, in the institution whereby you don't disclose all these things, directors, the management of the company can actually hold some things for themselves or give themselves the contract, which is what we call the insider or secret trading. Mm. Give themselves the contract and they profit from it. Profiting from what ought to go to the stakeholders of the company. So transparency abolishes. I don't use the word abolish because it means er totally eradicate, but it reduces the chance of mismanagement of company's assets. All right, great. Now, uh, what advice do you have for corporate entities on adherence to the principle of transparency and disclosure? I have three advice. The first is the strict adherence to the principle of um, corporate governance. And the NCG has about 28 principles in total, in which what we're discussing is just the 27 and 28 principle. Mm. If these principles can be, ad can be added to within the company's um, company structure, they would have a very fruitful and um, and, and uh, prosperous, what's it called, um, years of running the company. The second advice is um, get a corporate compliance officer. Because most companies think they, they mistake the, the, um, the role of a corporate compliance officer to that of a secretary sometimes. Not all secretaries are chartered. Ixan provides a platform or it's um, a group of, uh, what's it called, professionals mm. that trains you on how to be an administrator at the same time how to be a secretary. So this body of professionals are readily available to companies to guide them in the way they ought to go. Just to avoid them running into um, penalties regarding law and also having a face off with their stakeholders to ensure just smooth running. And lastly, um, Ixan is a body you can actually reach out to if you're facing any difficulty or challenge as to how to go. And because they have the database of all the members who they can refer to you at any time. Mm -hmm. And also myself talking, I'm also a charter secretary and administrator. All right. Thank you very much. All right, great. Thank you so much, Mr. Isaac Abayomi Usuntui. All right, uh, Mr. Ketefe, does Ixan have any guidance materials on transparency and disclosure? Thank you very much for me. And let me once again thank our guests. Uh, he has even answered part of the question as <laughs> the relevance and the role 
mm-hmm. it's how you can play when it comes to training. Let me start by saying that the Institute has enormous materials, enormous guidance materials and publications on the theme of transparency and disclosure. You know, transparency and disclosure is one of the core principles in corporate governance. In addition to this uh, extensive literature, the Institute also has a very vibrant training department that has uh, that offers regular training on diverse teams, diverse areas in corporate governance. And if you also look at many of the communiques that are issued at the end of our major programs, you will see many recommendations uh, that relates to you know, the ideas, many ideas in corporate governance, including transparency and disclosure, accountability, responsibility, all those, you definitely see them there. So we advise many stakeholders in the field of governance to reach out to the Institute to get a diverse and rich literature on the theme of transparency and other area of corporate governance. And also, the corporate entity can also engage in constant training or, or their directors and top management staff with Institute to, to enhance their knowledge and build their capacity uh, on the team. We are discussing disclosure and transparency on the team of accountability, on the team of succession planning, on the team of effectiveness, and virtually all the teams and areas of corporate governance. So for more information on ESA training, please call Akudazi on 080-37-26-68-53. For more information on ESA training, please call Akudazi on 080-37-26-68-53. Thank you very much for listening and have a pleasant day. All right, thank you, Mr. Kadi Ketefe, FCIS, Head of Research Ixan, and also Mr. Isaac Abayomi, Usuntui, ACIS, Patnad Usuntui, and Tukon Lawa Lo Utielo. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for the show. All right, and that's how we wrap it up this morning on Corporate Governance Platform, brought to you by the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan. We'll be back again next week, Wednesday, on a fresh edition. I am Fumi Omo.